Welcome back everybody. Today's going to be a bit of a shorter video, but I'm going to try to answer two viewer questions in one since they're closely related. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below in this video or any other, and I'm happy to answer them either in the comments or sometimes even talk about them in a video. I think this is a good way to interact back and forth between, between all of us, and I think that some of the questions that get asked are things that other people are probably themselves curious about. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the process of actually applying for a postdoc position. This is a little different than grad school, right? When you do grad school, there's a set things you need to do, like you need to go onto the department website and fill out their forms and submit your GRE and your GPA and transcripts. And here it's different. You're reaching out to an individual PI that you want to join their lab. So there's really two ways that you could go about applying. The first way, and the one that I don't necessarily recommend, although it has worked for others, is through job postings. So whether it's on a PI's you know, website, you know, their lab has their own um, dedicated web page, through the department web page, through a job board like LinkedIn or Indeed, you can go ahead and apply for a position and say, you know, yes, I see your job posting and here's my CV and my cover letter and these are the people I want for letters of recommendation. I think personally the better way of doing it is to just think about whose lab do you want to go to. There's got to be somebody in the field that you know and you're like, I really want to go to their lab. Or come up with a list. Talk to your PI. Hey, you know, we're getting close to the end here. I need to start thinking about labs to go to. Who do you recommend that I go to and why? Come up with your list, and then what you're going to want to do is email them. It doesn't need to be a very in-depth email. It could be something as simple as, Dear Dr. So-and-so, my name is so-and-so, and I work in so-and-so's lab at blank university. I've been studying this, and I'm really interested in your lab for these reasons. Please find attached a cover letter describing more about myself, and please find my CV, and I look forward to hearing from you. And then that's it. And you just wait, see what they say. Some of them are gonna come back right away and say, you know, thank you, but I really don't have any more room. I don't have any more funding. Some of them are gonna come back and say, you know, something in between, you know, yes and no. And they'll say, well, you know, I'm not really able to take on anyone right now, but maybe in a few months I will, so stay in touch. And some of them are gonna come back interested. Okay, can you send me three people that can be a reference for you? or? Let's set up a time to talk on the phone. You know, that's exactly what you're going to be shooting for. But that's pretty much what you need to be doing is you need to be reaching out to them yourself and saying, I'm interested in joining your lab. The advantages to doing that are that one, not every PI is going to be posting on a job board. Many of the newer PIs that aren't established, they kind of have to because they have to be able to get word of mouth out. But some of the PIs that are more established, they don't necessarily need to, especially if you're talking about somebody with a big name, okay? They can just attract any talent that they want. They don't need to post on a job board. Some of them don't have time. Some of them, what's gonna happen is you're gonna catch them before they would even post something. So I'll give you this example. You have Professor A, and Professor A has four postdocs, and one of them is gonna be leaving in a few months. Well, they probably haven't posted anything up on a job board yet, but they already know that one of their postdocs is about to leave. So they already have in mind that they need to replace them. So if you email them, you know, and it happens to be that opportune time, they'll say, yes, I am looking for somebody, you know, so you could kind of catch them before anything gets posted. So that kind of gets to the first question that was asked by a viewer, which is what's the best way to do it? Is it through like a job board or through, emailing them one-on-one -on -one. and I think that directly contacting them is definitely what from my personal experience and from others that I know the best way of doing it. Now the second question was well I've emailed them and it's been about a week and I haven't heard anything back so what do I do? And that's a great question and this kind of comes to time. So I would say that after a week I wouldn't be too worried. You know don't forget PIs are busy. They have their own lab that they're running. For all you know, they're out of town at a conference. They could be taking vacation. They could be at study section. You know, so there's a thousand different reasons why they can be slow to respond. And in general, I find that academics are just generally slow to respond to email. 
There's just so much going on in their day. They are so busy, they don't have time to keep up with email and that's fine. You just need to be patient. I think that after a week and a half, you know, or something in that time range, it's totally okay to send a polite follow-up email and say, you know, I'm just reminding you that I had sent my CV and I'm really interested in getting to know you and your work more and having a chance to discuss the possibility of joining your lab. Most times that nudge is enough for them to say, oh yeah, I totally forgot about that person. Like I was interested in them. I should probably follow up. Or it's enough for them to say, you know, sorry, I just have been really busy and haven't had a chance to follow up yet. I'm really not looking for a new postdoc. But either way, it'll, it's usually enough to nudge them one way or another. Sometimes PIs do get back to you really fast. Sometimes they're slow. The lab that I ended up doing my postdoc in, I had sent an email and I want to say it was end of September, beginning of October. And it was around Thanksgiving. So like towards the end of November, when I actually heard back from her from the first time where she was like, oh yeah, I'm interested in you joining my lab. And by then I had, I had already started talking to about three other PIs about joining their lab. And she was really late to the game. Now it didn't end up mattering because she was by far and away the person I wanted to do my postdoc with. And she was the one that I thought was going to be the best fit and best for my career. So it didn't end up mattering in the end. But um, just as an example, so just because you don't hear from someone for a little bit doesn't necessarily mean that the answer is going to be no. Now, keep in mind, there are going to be times where you're going to run into PIs that actually just never get back to you. And that's fine. You know, they're lost. If you're, you know, a hard worker, you're smart. Hey, you know, they're lost that they didn't get back to you. So you know, don't let that bother you. It's totally fine. It happens to all of us. So with that, I'm going to wrap this video up. Again, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up, share it with people that you think could be interested in this kind of content. I'm happy to answer viewer questions. So continue asking them down below. If we could rack up enough, we could do like a real Q&A video where we go through several different questions that people ask and we kind of rapid fire. So I really like that kind of content and I think that in general this kind of a channel is going to benefit substantially from that because the questions that each person have generally tends to be the same thing that everybody has. These are all questions that I had myself and I'm sure other people have. So don't be afraid to ask and I'm happy to make videos about this. So with that I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.